This is Johnny Hickman from Cracker, and you're watching The Rock Offers. And you're watching The Rock Office. Hey, we're not there. You've reached The Rock Office. It's time to clock in and rock out. I'm your host, Bill Smith. And I'm Kevin Davis. All right, we are back. We are here. We are on set representing Cleveland and uh, Run DMC. And we are proud to bring you our interview with Johnny Hickman of Cracker. And uh, many of you might remember Cracker. They had several hits in the 90s. Low was their, uh, their all-time big all biggest hit. And I'm actually... Uh, I have their entire discography because I think they're actually really great. They, uh, David Lowry, who's the lead singer and songwriter, has done a lot of work with uh, many bands as far as producing and songwriting, and he also is a founding member of Camper Van Beethoven, who uh, is you know uh, a kind of a seminal band in the the architecture of uh, alternative rock music, uh, college rock in the '80s, and uh, they their biggest hit "Stick the Skinhead Bowling." But if you don't know who Camper Van Beethoven is, that telling you that song won't make a difference. But Cracker uh, legitimately uh, has sold several million platinum plus albums. Low, like I said, was a big hit. And one of my all-time favorite bands, actually. And we had a chance to go to a new venue in Cleveland, yeah. the, the Music Box Supper Club. Right. Yeah, Music Box Supper Club. A uh, pretty neat place down in the uh, flats area of the Cleveland, down on the West Bank. Um, basically, uh, you know, it, it's a concert club that gives you the opportunity to go in and have a nice meal before the show, uh, and kind of during the, the beginning parts of the show, have some drinks, and uh, you know, have a nice, uh, they've got a nice seating arrangement mm -hmm. there that uh, allows you to be comfortable, take in the show, and, and uh, it's really enjoyable, I gotta yeah. tell you. I didn't know what to expect, it was uh, it was uh, like a week old when we, we yeah. were uh, down there. Uh, it's, it's now been a little bit of time, because we shoot some of these things ahead of time. Um, but I, I'll tell you what, I, I was uh, I was pretty thoroughly impressed. They they, they uh, were all very kind. Yeah. Uh, you know, it wasn't any of this. Uh, there, there was no riffraff. Uh, everything was gorgeously clean. Of course, it was yeah. new. However, I, I have a belief that it'll probably remain that way, yeah. just due to the stylistic uh, aspect of the place. How they're you know they're they're kind of engaging uh, and, and putting those two things together. You know, the supper club traditionally. You know, you go in, you have a meal. And then uh, the music aspect yeah. of it with it was really cool. I think it's cool to combine those two. Yeah, and, you know, it, you're comfortable. You got to see the band. There was not a, really a bad seat in the house. The yeah. sound was really good, which I was impressed with. Right. And, like, you can tell the, the people who designed it and who had the idea for this know what they're doing. They put a lot of thought into it. And not only, you know, is it kind of a unique idea, but it's also, I think, something that will serve Cleveland well as another venue to get, you know, bands like Cracker, uh, you know, that we might not have an opportunity to see them. Yeah, so. I, can see, I can see a venue like this going over in any major city. I mean, it's yeah. really, it's, it's a phenomenal idea. I mean, this is something that I think that if it blew up and if the people who started it really wanted to, they, they could probably take this thing, you know. Yeah, franchise it. Franchise, yeah. yeah. But enough. Uh, check out Music Box Supper Club. We're uh, giving them a free plug. So. That's right. And if you take in your franchise, you remember who brought that up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, maybe you are already. I don't know. Sad that I don't know that, but anyhow, that's okay. Anyway, uh, back to the music, back to the subject at hand. Right. Mr. Johnny Hickman from Cracker. What a gentleman. It was an absolute pleasure to, to speak with him. I thought he was uh, intriguing and yeah. uh, gentlemanly. And, you know, when I meet these people that I've literally listened to since I was a child, like I had their first two albums on cassette, uh, you know, I get a little intimidated because I'm like, wow, I hope he's, you know, nice. You know, I don't, don't but he was. Don't want to ruin your perception of the Yeah, yeah. Say. Not that he needs to live up to my image. But he, no. he was a great guy. Uh, we got to actually meet David Lowry as well. Yeah, uh, he had a 
rather unfortunate incident. He's uh, he's actually a professor, and uh, he was uh, about a week out from starting classes and uh, lost his uh, hard drive, hard drive took a dive. Uh, earlier in the day. So he was really flipping out. So uh, he was supposed to be in on the interview, uh, unfortunately. Last minute change. Last minute change. So we, we did only get uh, Johnny Hickman, but that's good. I mean, we you know we value that, and uh, he was a great guy to talk to. Yeah, so, but. Here you go. Without any further ado, Mr. Johnny Hickman from Cracker. All right. Hey, everybody. We are here at the Music Box Supper Club in Cleveland. It's a new venue. It's our first time here. And we had the privilege of speaking with Mr. Johnny Hickman from uh, Cracker. And uh, Mr. Hickman, thank you for talking with us today. I'm really excited about this. My this is, pleasure. My pleasure. I, I was telling you before we started filming that my first exposure to you guys was when the movie Buffy the Vampire Slayer came out. And Teen Angst was used in that campaign. Yeah. So I got the soundtrack. And it wasn't on there. And I was like, what? I, I was furious. So, uh, Screwy music business. They, they pull that kind of I know. Crap, you know? But I, eventually, uh, a friend of mine led me to who you guys were, and I got the cassette. The cra- <laughs> and I, I, went I love the word cassette. Say it again. Cassette. Get the cassette. Well, I went through like two or three copies of that cassette because I, I wore it out. And I, I don't just say this because you're here. That album is on my top ten list of albums of the 90s. Oh, your, excellent. Your debut. Excellent. And I... I it is, it is great. Probably but, make the cut, man. <laughs> well, well, hey, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm just i such a fan. I'm thankful for you being on the show. Oh, so. my pleasure. Um, you guys are currently on tour? We are on tour uh, most of the summer, off and on. Uh, we went to China a few weeks ago. Okay, nice. Spent not quite two weeks in China. That okay. was an interesting experience. Uh, first was, time? Yes, first oh, time. Okay. And uh, uh, the amount of red tape and bureaucracy was insane. Hmm. Uh it took almost more effort than to go to China and play music, <laughs> but wow. you know, it was really pretty funny. Uh, you have to send them your passport, and then they send you back a Chinese one. And then it's, it's very okay. official. They want to know what's going on lyrically. And Really? Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So they scrutinized everything. A little bit. Uh, yeah. Not as much as we th- it looked like they were going to. They kind of okayed things, but they just wanted to be sure that we weren't going to be disparaging to, uh, you know. Hmm. Okay. The okay. Empire of China. Yeah. Right, That's right. Like, so, well, how other than those little red tape issues, how's the tour been going for you so far? Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, we, uh, David is my partner, David Lowry in the band Cracker, that's our singer, and main songwriter. He uh, is teaching college at the University of Athens, Georgia. Oh, cool, very cool. And uh, so we work around his schedule. Okay. And he's going for his master's this year as well. So. Oh, great. And, uh, and every moment he has, he, we jump in the ro- on the road and we go and it's play music. And, uh, you know, you mentioned you guys two new albums coming out. Can you share a little bit about maybe the release date, the titles you guys are working sure, with? Sure, yeah. Uh, working titles at this point, uh, we're calling it like a, double, like a double record package, Berkeley to Bakersfield. Cool. Uh, one of the records, as, as you know, as a Cracker fan, some of the stuff we do has a little bit of a country base. A little. Uh, a little twang to it, uh, and some of it is very British glam rock, and we sort of slam the two together and put a little soul and funk in there, and okay. we put everything in the stew. Okay. And uh, David being the lyricist he is and the singer he is, it always sounds like Cracker, and probably with my guitar, which is sort of like the other voice uh, right. in the band, you know, it's the conversation between the two mm-hmm. that kind of makes that Cracker sound. Uh, Berkeley to Bakersfield, uh, because we uh, recorded the first part of one of the, one of the records we recorded uh, with the guys from Kerosene had okay Michael Urbano and Davey Farragher all right uh, drummer and bass player respectively and uh, it's it's very rock it's very rock cracker okay. and it's very Good. Uh, uh, got that little bit of soul we grew up listening to bands like War and uh, okay little yeah the feet band that had a little bit of funk with the rock and a little bit of mm-hmm. more soul than funk more than hard funk more kind of a soul trip okay. Uh, we like War, we like Sly and the Family Stone, and we mix that with our Rolling Stones and Zeppelin influences, and okay. somehow it becomes this thing. You know? Comes Cracker. Yeah, and uh, the other one uh, that we're calling Bakersfield wasn't recorded in Bakersfield, even though I played in country bands up there for a little while, just before okay. we started Cracker, David and I. Um, but we made uh, a, a, we recorded a lot of songs with um, some very talented musicians from uh, Athens, Georgia. It's okay. a little more country-based. Oh, a couple okay. of David's uh, uh, sort of songwriter story kind of songs. Okay. Some fantastic stuff. But we've written a lot of stuff together with the Kerosene Hat guys. And just, you know, it, 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 there's a chemistry. Okay. There's four guys, uh, the, the guys that made Kerosene Hat with us. 
it's always been David and I and, and like hundreds of other musicians and right. and studio guys. We played with Jim Keltner, one of the best drummers in the world. Wow, we've yeah. done stuff with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Some of those guys have played wow. on our records and uh, Tommy Stinson from the Replacements. Okay, and uh, you know we've been really lucky. We've got some really talented friends, and yeah. we've always we didn't set out to do it this way, but it kind of. It's like a Steely Dan sort of model where they, it's these two guys and they bring in whoever okay. they think sounds right for a song. And that's kind of the cracker uh, modus operandi. That's awesome. And it's good. It's, it's a, lot, a lot of fun for us because um, when we're writing songs, we'll say, you know who would be good on this for drums is you know, Miguel or you know, one right. of our friends. Um, and that's just sort of the way it's been and, um, from the start. We didn't specifically set it out to design it to, to be that way. But it just naturally just happened. Just I mean, progressed. Uh, you know, we had a record label before we really kind of had a full band. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was David and I. And uh, David was already signed to the label with Camper Van Beethoven. Right. And then when he and I got together after they broke up uh, and started writing songs together, they said, well, well, we like this song and we like that one. And David said, well, yeah, well, Johnny wrote that one and that one. And we both wrote this one. So eventually they said, well, let's get this this Johnny character in here. Okay. They thought I was just in his buddy from hometown. You know, right. Which I am, but... You know, uh, it was part of the sound of the new band, and uh, they wanted to call it right. Camp of Van Beethoven, and we both kind of went, mm, nah, it's, no. nah, it's right. a, we're, we're doing, we're starting fresh here. Totally different. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's you know, yeah. um, it's a different kind of thing we're doing, yeah, so. That's cool. All right, we are here at the Music Box, Mr. Johnny Hickman from Cracker. We're going to be right back. Come 
Hey everyone, we're back. This is Johnny Hickman, Cracker. Um, such a treat to be talking with you. And one of the things I always wonder about uh, bands, especially like a band with you guys, for instance, that has such a rich and diverse catalog, you know, what thought process goes into picking your, your set list? And if you need some suggestions, I have a few. Uh, for the, <laughs> for the you are a fan. Oh, that's very cool. That's very oh, cool. I... You, um, it, we, we, we change it. There are certain songs. I mean, we've got hundreds of songs. So, right, uh, right. And you can even probably dip into some CVB stuff. Sometimes we do. Yeah. Uh, David and I and Greg Leischer, the guitar player from uh, Camper Van Beethoven, just did a, 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 an semi-acoustic tour together. Just oh, cool. Trio. All right. And it was so fun for me because they said, well... Jonathan's usually here playing violin. Why don't you bring your mando? And I said, I haven't touched the mando in a couple of years. Oh, you'll be great. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up playing a lot of the violin parts on mandolin. Okay, cool. And it was just a blast for me because I'm a camper man. Right. So oh, I got yeah. to play all these great camper songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, Greg played on some cracker stuff. And it was really, it was really, really cool. That's cool. Yeah, really Two of cool. my favorite songs, and I'm not saying that because you're here. Another song about the rain. Oh, thank you. A whole lot of trouble. Oh, thank you. Whole Lot of Trouble was written. On the Empire Records soundtrack. Yeah, yeah Whole Lot of Trouble is, uh, I have another buddy of mine who I write songs with, uh, a buddy of mine, Chris Leroy, of okay. California. And that's mostly his song. And okay. uh, I added a couple little parts here and there. But we write a lot of songs together, and uh, we're, we're a good songwriting mm -hmm. team. David knows him really well. We're all from the same little town okay. of Redlands, California. Okay. Chris is a great, great songwriter. And he and I had a band together called The Dangers that... Okay. Uh, that um, they're, they're back together now. I can't be with them because I got Cracker. Right. But uh, um, they play at our camp out, a festival that we have every year. And uh, David knows Chris. Uh, and David used to come see our band, The Dangers. Okay. He used to come and, and see us at the clubs when right. he was probably like 19 and sneaking in or something. Okay. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Another song about the rain. Uh, um, oh, man. That, the first time on my cassette when I heard that, I was like, I was literally blown away. I mean, that song to me, I don't know, maybe... That's another one with Chris Leroy. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe to me, like, I don't know, songs about rain and the songs about trains. I don't know. I feel like in my heart, like, I have a connection to. And they, being at such a young age, hearing that song, it's always stuck with me. Is, oh, thank you. Uh, you know, and I just, you know, what was inspiration behind it, maybe, you know? I wrote, it, it's a pretty long song, and right. it was much, much longer. I mean, I had just been through a really bad breakup. You can kind of oh. hear that in the song. Mm, it's, right. very, it's very melancholy, very sad. And I had this big, huge, long song. And my buddy Chris Leroy came in and said, you need to cut a lot of this out and make it shorter. So I did. Mm -hmm. You know, I edited out some of the verses and changed the, 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 the pacing of the verses. And he kind of rewrote it with me. And we used the same lyrics, although he shortened it down and, and uh, added that great two-note riff. Da, 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 right. Da, 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 da. That was Chris. Okay. Now, he's not exactly a lead guitar player, mm -hmm. but he had these two great notes, and I went, no, I, I, I like it like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. finish okay. the song, and I'm gonna use your two notes. Uh, yeah, uh, that song seems to uh, to really resonate with with people. Yeah. Mr. Johnny Hickman from Cracker, you gotta love this guy. <laughs> We're gonna be right back. When the fate has pried us loose A lot of mercy hurts my eyes Well, is it worth the things you lose? To board the train and watch the skies I see myself sleep at night Sing myself to sleep With another song about the rain It's coming down and burns through me Another song about the rain Got a line straight from my heart It was a time when it ran to you Another place when we were smart Before the flood and time was through Well I see myself 
sleep at night I sing myself to sleep With another song about the rain Coming down at first through me We are at the Music Box in beautiful downtown Cleveland, Ohio with uh, Johnny Hickman from Cracker, uh, one of my favorite bands uh, as a child and still to this day. Thanks for sticking with us, man. They, well, you, you know, you guys have been making incredible music now for so long. It's, you know, literally, you know, like your songs are part of the soundtrack of my life. I and, love to um, hear that, man. It, it, you know, like my, my friends and my wife won't un quite understand, but like, honey, I just... I need to hear nothing to believe in right now, or like, <laughs> like Star, or something from Gentleman's Blues, or, cool. um, you know, and she's like, okay. But uh, one thing we always ask our guests is one of the things that we strongly feel about, passionately about on the rock office is the preservation of the history of physical music, meaning LPs, CDs, sure. cassettes, sure. even. Uh, you know, we're not too big of fans of digital downloading. Mm -hmm. We like to ask our guests, do you have a preference? What are your thoughts on downloading, good or bad? And do you still purchase physical music? You know, the, the LPs, the CDs. I do. I am. I'm from the old school. I like to have it in my hand. But, yeah. but then, so do a lot of the people. I mean, I live in Fort Collins, Colorado. It's a very hip town. It's a okay. college town, and most of the music fans that I know, they're really into vinyl, and so they like to go get the vinyl. Is it coming out on vinyl? Is the first thing they ask. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, so it looks like we're going to have to put on some more vinyl. You got it. You got it. Um, but I, personally, I like to have it in my hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. uh, uh, digital downloading. I mean, it's, it, we live in this age. That's, that's, right. what, the, that's, the, that's what we're, it's where we are now. And, uh, you know, our, David uh, has been very outspoken in his uh, defense of copyright and, and of protecting uh, intellectual properties. Yes. And uh, God bless him. He's the guy for the job, too. He's very uh, educated about it. Um, He's a mathematician. He has a mathematics degree, and that, and he's teaching. Basically, what he's teaching is uh, music business economics. Is, oh, is kind great! Of what okay. he's, his his whole thing is about, and so he knows probably more about the subject than most of the of the uh, congressmen and senators right. who are making the rules. You know, yeah, he right. really does. He's, he's number one. He's been in the business that long, mm -hmm. and number two, he's made it uh, a point to study in depth the way the whole machine works. Okay. And when people steal music and use it for, you know, we have no problem with our fans burning each other a CD or, you know, emailing each other. That's, I, I did that. I made, I made party CDs when I was a kid. That's, mean, that's just sharing music. It's right. turning other people onto your band. Mm -hmm. And we have no, it's not what we have a problem with. What we have a problem with is people that use uh, music without permission and make a lot of money doing so. Okay. There are some very big corporations out there who, uh, you know, with the streaming, they're making they're making a lot of money, and they're paying the artists pretty much nothing. Spotify, Pandora, yeah, Pandora. within all these companies. And uh, to give you an idea, there was one deep album track from one of my solo records, uh, and uh, it got something like four four thousand plays. Okay. Uh, close to four thousand plays that year, uh, a couple of years ago, and my take was 0.9 cents. So wow. that's kind of what you know, they can technically say they're paying us, but is that per play or no? That was that was my that was my take. Wow. So we got to they, they haven't quite figured this out yet. Yeah, you know, there yeah, has to be a way absolutely. to. I mean, that's how I feed my kids, man. Right. You know? wow. uh, I can't feed them that's, just on T-shirt sales. You know, right, that's and if terrible, if you if you have a, a, an artist or a band that you really like, I mean, help them, help support them that way. I mean, if you pay for some of their music. Uh, and pay for tickets to the shows, obviously, or a T-shirt or a poster or whatever. That's how we make our living. That's, you know, as if you were a plumber or a carpenter or right. a nurse or anything else mm -hmm. anyone might do. You don't want to do that for free either, you right, know. So right. uh, if you want bands to be, if you want live music to continue, 
than support your artists yeah. because there's no other way. Exactly. We can't do it. It right. takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort right. and a lot of uh, money yes. to make a record. It mm -hmm. does. It takes a good chunk. Yeah. Well, not know? just that. The years it takes to perfect your instrument. Sure. And, and, and to get better at it. And, uh, you know, yeah. these are uh, hours that we spend because we love it. But it's hours we could be spending uh, working a day job or right. doing something exactly. else. Exactly. So, you know, help us sustain it. This is what I tell people. Just help us keep it going. Last question. Where can people find where to get your albums, your tour dates, uh, you know, any other kind of merchandise, like, you know, on the interweb thing out there, where where can people go to find out information about you guys? Uh, you follow can go you to or Twitter, or you Facebook, can, you or can, whatever. You can hit us on Facebook. I get Johnny Hickman on Facebook. Uh, you can find a lot of information there. I keep in contact with a lot of people. I've got over five thousand people, so they they, they they blocked me, so I had to get a public page on oh, okay. Facebook too. So I've got both, and I talk to people okay. on both. And uh, you can find out there, or you can go to Cracker on Facebook. Okay, and we have a page there, and we have a website. Uh, uh, cracker, cracker soul, soul. cracker soul dot com. Okay. Cracker soul was uh, just sort of what we call our music. You know, mm -hmm. One day we asked each other, "What is the kind of music we make?" Oh, I guess it's cracker, cracker soul. soul music, you know, or white guys. Like, <laughs> well, and, uh, obviously. Oh, what was really great is when Do we met Dr. Dre uh, back in the day on MTV, and okay. he was walking down the hall, and he said, "You call your band Cracker, huh?" And he went, "Yeah." And he went. That takes some balls, man. <laughs> <laughs> he loved it, man. He just cool. He wanted. He, he, he gave him a T-shirt. That's man. awesome. Like, that's, that's pretty ballsy, man. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. Hickman, it, it's been an honest pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for taking your time out. My and, pleasure. And um, I, I got to get some autographs and stuff before Absolutely. we leave. So. Absolutely. But um, the legend himself, Mr. Hickman, <laughs> Johnny Hickman from Cracker. We're going to be right back. Cheers to you. All right, we're back. Mr. Johnny Hickman from Cracker at the Music Box Supper Club in the West Bank Flats, Cleveland, Ohio. What a great guy. Really appreciate him uh, speaking with us. I want to thank his manager and publicist, Tony, for arranging everything. These guys are great. If you like, you know, what they've done in the past, you know, they, they stay true to who they are. And they, they do awesome alternative country hillbilly rockabilly whatever you want to call it uh, but it's great i'm a huge fan i love what they do they were great live in concert that night super imp yeah. Yeah, super impressed and like i said i it was just such a pleasure and a treat to speak with him i had such a great time so mr hickman thank you uh for your time and uh, you know hopefully you enjoy this interview as well absolutely and speaking of enjoying interviews uh you know we we uh we invite you formally to our uh, website uh, at uh, www.therockoffice.com. You can uh, check out not only this uh, video there, but you can also check out some of our past uh, videos. We don't have all of them up there. So if you want to check out every episode that we've ever had, you can hit the button at the bottom of that page and take yourself over to YouTube, where we've actually got all of them archived, a little easy to archive on the free archiving. But anyhow, we, 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 uh, we appreciate the, uh, the love that you guys continue to show us on Facebook over at facebook.com slash rock office. Bill? Uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter at the underscore rock underscore office. Uh, you know, also, we are now on Vimeo. Here's the address, another avenue to catch our videos at, you know, iTunes podcast. And, you know, we just also want to thank you guys and mention that we do have merchandise on our website. We have t stickers and T-shirts. We appreciate anything that you do to, to help us fund what we do so we can bring it back to you and uh, we know that you guys are enjoying what we're doing because of the awesome feedback that we're getting from you guys so we thank you for that keep that coming as well but as always remember support your local independent record store by buying the, the physical copy of the album instead of the digital download and we'll see you next time on the rock office take care and god bless